Hey guys, welcome to a new video idea that I'm having. Um, as you can tell from the title, this is going to be a fantasy booking type video. I haven't had a lot of time to do anything else lately. I have the research done for another video idea, but with my new job and everything, it's just been, I've been so tired and my feet have been hurting a lot and I just really haven't been able to put aside any time to make a video because any free time I have now, which is only like a couple hours after work before I have to go back to bed, is spent just laying down and watching TV, YouTube, whatever. So I figured I would make this video because it's not going to require a lot of work or really any kind of planning. I'm just going to be ad-libbing the whole thing. I wrote down some notes here, so don't worry. Um, this really isn't going to be my most professional video, but if you guys like the idea, maybe I'll do some more in the future and maybe put some more effort into it. Um, also, I forgot that leaving the batteries in my lights uh, drains them, even if they're off. So I only have one working right now, and even that, I don't know how long that's going to last, so I'm just going to leave that on, and then most likely during this video, it's probably going to die. So let's get to it. As you guys know, I am not a big fan of the stardom draft. Uh, I've made it very clear that I think it's a not a very good idea. The first one, sure, something to shake things up, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I don't even think the first one should have existed. I feel like the stardom draft itself is just a lazy way to make things happen without actually having to do any kind of storylines for it. I mean, why did this person go to this team? Oh, they got drafted. But it also doesn't explain why they have such a fast and drastic change of personality or treating people who were just the day before their best friends like garbage. Like, it it doesn't really make much sense a lot of times. And the biggest offenders of this ideas really were Hazuki, Natsuko, and... Konami. All three of them kind of just had drastic changes that didn't really fit with their character immediately after joining the new faction just because they were drafted. It just doesn't make much sense because there was no buildup or or any kind of hints at t to most of them. The Natsuko one is debatable, um, and but the Konami and Hazuki ones, there, there really was nothing leading up to that. There was a lot of things they could have done, and that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. Every person who was moved to a new team because of the stardom draft, I'm going to be covering here. I believe I got everyone, but I could have forgotten some people. Um, these are only going to be stardom signed people, of course, just like most of my videos. So let's go to the first one. All right, so if I'm looking down a lot, it's because my laptop with my script and everything is down here. I just made bullet points for this one. There is no script I'm following, so... Let's get to it. The first one is Hazuki joining Ototai. This one I felt like they had a very good story that they could have done here. There was a lot they could have done to make it more organic than what they did. Now, like I said, the first draft actually doesn't bother me too much because it was just the first one. It was just a thing. Like there, It wasn't a yearly thing at that point. And how Hazuki did it was actually pretty interesting because... There was a small period after joining Ototai where she didn't actually enjoy it. She wasn't joining in on all of the antics and all of that stuff. And so while this one, in my opinion, is the least offensive one, I still want to cover it just because I think it would be cool. And I, I actually thought of a story for this that I think would be pretty awesome. So going on the first thing is... What's going to set this whole story off is that EO starts focusing a lot more on Azumi and Momo. Now, it was already set it up like that uh, a lot already. Az um, EO picked Azumi first in the draft, and then Momo. But, of course, in these fantasy bookings, the draft doesn't count, so that doesn't matter. But, they could have had a series of matches where EO just kind of seemed to favor Momo and Azumi more. Maybe tagging Momo more often than Hazuki in matches or you know giving Momo like side hugs or something like that or congratulating her on wins more often than Hazuki which could have started to cause some resentment in Hazuki. This goes until Momo wins the white belt 
Now, Momo wins the white belt off of Io, of course. And this is going to be another catalyst because shortly after Momo wins the white belt, Hazuki challenges for it. Now, it's important for Hazuki to challenge for it and not Momo to say that she wants Hazuki to challenge for it because this shows that Hazuki is trying to get one up on Momo, maybe to win some favor with Io, after Hazuki's failed attempt at getting the white belt from Io. Now, of course, in this match, Momo beats her and gets her first successful defense as a white belt champion. Now, what's important is that after this match, it's going to be the main event, of course, so Queen's Quest comes out because Queen's Quest won. So Io comes out and she starts congratulating Momo, you know, um, saying how proud she is of her and that Momo is going to be the future of not only Queen's Quest, but stardom. And that she wants Momo to take over her ace position once she leaves, because at this point, Io leaving for the WWE is already a known thing. Of course, this is going to cause a lot of resentment and hatred from Hazuki towards Momo. So as time goes on, Hazuki gets more and more jealous of Momo. She keeps getting, you know, the praise and the and the spotlight from Io, Stardom, the fans, while Hazuki is kind of slowly shifting backwards. This obviously causes a lot of resentment and jealousy. This also is going to be where Kagetsu starts taking chances and after the matches to try to get Hazuki on her side. She starts actively trying to recruit Hazuki. We've seen it before, um, Kagetsu, when Tam joined up, Kagetsu and Odo Tai, they're not strangers to trying to poach people from other factions. I mean, look at every draft. They, they're pretty much the ones that steal people every time. So Kagetsu is now trying to grab Hazuki, but Hazuki is, you know, not letting in because she still admires Io and she still wants to prove herself. But she's getting there. This goes on for quite a while until a eight-man tag match between Io, Momo, Azumi, and Hazuki versus Kagetsu, you know, the three other people. <laughs> I don't really know who's going to be an Ototai at this point because a lot of this is going to be happening at the same time. But basically, all you need to know is that Kagetsu is going to be in the match. So the match goes on like normal. And But towards the end, Hazuki betrays the rest of Queen's Quest, allowing Odo Tai to win. This is a callback to how Queen's Quest was created, with Io betraying Mayu, and then Momo betraying, I think, Mayu again um, to join Queen's Quest. I, I think it, it would be kind of a cool similarity that Hazuki, being the first founding member alongside Io, betrays them to join in their ultimate enemy, uh, just like how they all betrayed the people they loved to join Queen's Quest. It would just be a really cool similarity and comparison that I think would have would have really added something to this story. Io leaves for the WWE, Hazuki is now in Odotai, and usually this is where I would end the fantasy booking, but I do want to set up a little bit more after just because I feel like this needs to be added to the story. So now we get to the point where Kagetsu is now fawning over Azumi, like she does now. And that causes Hazuki to kind of bring up some old memories of how Io treated Momo, and all of a sudden Hazuki's getting super jealous again. And this is what causes Hazuki to go after the high-speed belt to spite Azumi. Because if you remember in the beginning, Hazuki acted like she didn't care about the belt whatsoever. And I think it would have been better if she acted like that because she won the belt just to spite Azumi and then acted like the belt meant nothing to her. That would be a double attack against Azumi since everyone knows how much that belt means to Azumi. So that's where the story ends for this one in the, the fantasy booking terms. I just think this would have been a much better organically told story like this than just... Ototai stole her during the draft. Now, like I said, that is probably the only one I think is actually well done. Um, and that's the only one that isn't really too much of a problem for me. Mostly because it was the first one and Hazuki did kind of not want to be a part of Ototai in the beginning. I just felt like if you were going to make her 
change so fast after that anyway, you might as well have done it in a way where you could have slowly seen Hazuki turn to a way where she would be okay with joining the enemy. And, and this is how I think I would have done it if I was the Booker of Stardom. So let's go to the next one. Next one is going to be Natsuko joining Odo Tai. This one I have been pretty clear on online that I wasn't a fan of this at all. It didn't make much sense to me whatsoever about Natsuko so quickly turning on Jungle, when just before that they had this huge storyline where they reconciled. It just didn't make any sense. It just didn't click, in my opinion. I just didn't think that Natsuko should have been that willing to join Orotai, since they had always picked on her, you know, and then they also, she shouldn't have been so willing to just change her entire personality just because she got drafted. Because up until that point, they didn't even know that John wasn't going to still be a thing. John could have won and been a faction still. And then Natsuka would have been, you know, on John still because the first person Jungle would have picked would have been Natsuko. But all of a sudden, it's kind of acting like this was planned somehow. It, it just doesn't make any sense because no one from Odo Tai or Natsuko had anything to do with Jungle being eliminated by Hana. And if you actually watch the video over again, Natsuko actually does look upset when Jungle gets eliminated. For her to go from that to literally like less than, I don't know, 10 minutes later, I don't know how long it was between the match and the actual draft, but to her being just okay with joining Odotai, and not only okay, but like hugging and laughing with them, it didn't make any sense in my opinion. So this is how I would have had her join Odotai. Starting off, I would have, we would have to go back to where Jungle and Natsuko loses the tag titles to Momo and Utami. Of course, this leads them to go through their, their little spat that they had where they, um, Natsuko kind of wanted to go on her own and Jungle didn't want to or didn't understand. And so they fought and then they reconciled. That all stays the same. But where I'm going to change it after that is that Natsuko starts losing, like all the time. I don't know if she actually did, but. In, in this scenario, like pretty much every match that she's a part of, she's taking the pin. She's losing over and over and over again. And that starts making her lose, you know, some confidence. And as we all know, Natsuko is kind of an angry person. So she starts getting super angry as well. She starts, you know, bad-mouthing people, attacking people after matches because she lost. Kind of how she was before. Uh, and then she's kind of going back to that point. And she's realizing that, Jungle's way really isn't working out for her. She tried it once, it failed. They reconciled, she tried it again, failed again. She's, she's not seeing any outcomes to this. This is until they have a match where it's going to be um, John versus Orotai. It's going to be uh, Jungle and Natsuko versus, you know, Orotai people. It doesn't really matter. What matters here is that it's John versus Orotai. So they're wrestling. Well, uh, they're actually getting the upper hand. Jungle and Natsuko seem to actually be almost able to win a match for once that Natsuko was a part of. That is, until Orotai uses some dirty cheating tactics, you know, be it spray, weapon use, whatever, interference, it doesn't matter. They cheated, they won. And that is when Natsuko starts changing. She sees that these people were losing. Then they cheated. Then they won. And she starts thinking, maybe that's the way to go. If you can't win through ability, maybe you need to cheat. Things start slowly going forward, and not all at once, but you know, over the next couple matches, Natsuko starts slightly cheating. You know, maybe doing some things like taking people out on the outside more often than not, um, holding on to things longer than she usually does. Um, you know, just, just a little bit of cheating that she didn't used to do. And this kind of flows under the radar. You know, Jungle doesn't really notice. No, no one's really paying attention to it. But she seems to notice that she's doing a little bit better. She's still losing, but she's doing better. Then in one match, she just outright straight up cheats. Whether it be a, a, you know, a weapon attack, um, a spray attack, whatever you want to think about. 
she cheats like hard, like blatant cheating that you can't defend. And she wins. She actually wins the match. And this has now solidified the idea in her mind that her being a cheater can allow her to win when her doing the jungle way doesn't allow her to win. And this worries jungle. So jungle being the type of person she is, she challenges Natsuko to a match to try to set her on the right path and not go down the dark side. The, you know, I could see some very heated, you know, um, promos between the two. They're very good when they're working together. So this could have been amazing. They go on, the match happens. It's a Carrick Hall match, whatever, you know, maybe the main event. I doubt it because there's no belt involved, but whatever. They're fighting. Jungle has the upper hand pretty much the whole time. Nasco starts cheating. She Now they're on equal footing. And it's a hard, hard match. It's nearing the time limit. And Odo Tai interferes. They come in, they interfere, they beat up Jungle. Natsuko pins her, 1 2 3, wins. Natsuko beats Jungle in a singles match with Odo Tai's help. This, of course, leads to Kagetsu offering a position in Odo Tai, Natsuko accepting, and they sit there and they taunt Jungle as Jungle lays there defeated. And that is how I would have had Natsuko join Odo Tai. I think that is a much better gradual change to what she is now because it it was just such a drastic change. I mean, in some ways, it's even worse than Konami's because even though Konami had such a drastic change, she still didn't really change her personality too much. She just kind of changed allegiances really fast. But Natsuko, she kind of changed altogether. I mean, she never would have done a lot of the stuff she does now before she joined Odo Tai. It, it just didn't make much sense. And this is how I would have had Natsuko join Odo Tai. Let's move on to the next one. This, of course, is going to lead to John disbanding. So Jungle just lost to Natsuko. Natsuko betrayed her, left, and joined Odo Tai. This causes Jungle to go on somewhat of a down spiral. She she kind of gets in a funk. Um, you guys remember it. She kind of had that same feeling. I think it was after losing the tag belts with Nasco. She kind of had this like aura about her that she was kind of on a down spiral. She wasn't the same Jungle that she was before. So this is going to be happening, but the catalyst here is going to be Nasco leaving and her losing her best friend. She starts losing confidence in herself as a leader. She just lost someone who she had basically raised up into the wrestler she was. If you guys remember, Natsuko before, she was a small, dainty, believe it or not, girl. She was kind of a, she was more of like a high-speed wrestler than anything. Um, She wasn't very good, but she was not like she is now. (laughs) She was not a power wrestler in any terms, and she certainly wasn't like a cheater. She was a babyface. And Jungle kind of adopted her into Team Jungle, and, you know, the rest is history. I've made videos on it before, I don't need to talk about it again. But this leads to a 3 versus 3 match where Jungle actually loses. Like, she takes the pin to Hanakamura. And it doesn't really matter who else is in the match. Um, Let's just say it's Jungle, Kaiori, and Ruka versus Hana. I don't even know who else would be in it. Probably two foreigners. Let's just say two foreigners. Because at this time, TCS is still being created. It's not created yet. It's still being created. Like, it, the international army hasn't been thought of yet. Like, she's she's just coming into it. She had already left Orotai, blah, 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 blah. So, this is when Hana starts telling Jungle about her dream to create a team called, you know, Tokyo, or International Army, whatever, whichever one. I would have preferred if they just skipped over the International Army part because it was just so pointless. There was no point in it. They almost immediately dropped the name and the whole gimmick and just went to TCS. So for the rest of this, I'm just going to say TCS instead of International Army. So Hana starts telling Jungle about her dream to create a new team called Tokyo Cyber Squad or whatever. And it's going to be celebrating individuality. Um, They want to praise the individual parts of their members instead of kind of conforming into one group. And because Jungle is now in the lowest she's ever been, and much to 
the chagrin of like Ruka and Kyori, uh, she actually decides right then and there after that match to disband John. I know this is kind of like I could see why people would think this would be stupid. It's so sudden. But if you really think about it, up until this point, Jungle is kind of slowly becoming less and less of a person because of her um, Natsuko leaving. She's losing confidence in herself. She's losing matches. And she th this is kind of the boiling point. She just lost to Hana. She failed her team again. And then Hana starts talking about wanting to create a safe haven for like the hidden gems of stardom. And so she decides right then and there she's going to disband John. And this is when Hana offers the invitation to join the team, to come in, be her, you know, second command or whatever, be one of her top people, and make sure that there's a nice place there for the people because everyone knows that Jungle is a nice person. She's very motherly, and Hana feels like that would be very good for her team. Right as Jungle is about to say that she wants to join up, Leo jumps in the ring. And starts talking about how they can't trust Hana. She's, she's, she's always an evil person. She's always making fun of us. She's, she just betrayed her other team. She can't be trusted. This is not a good idea. But Jungle doesn't listen to her and decides to walk over to Hana, shake her hand, and join the team. And of course, Ruka follows because Ruka looks up to Jungle and she doesn't want to be left behind. And Kaori, not really having any any like huge stakes in anything that happens in stardom decides to just follow jungle anyway she's there for jungle and if jungle's going over there she wants to follow her so now everyone joined um, tcs except leo leo stands up for herself and says you know what i am not joining hana i don't trust her i don't think this is a good idea like you're all crazy and walks off this adds a little bit more character to Leo. It gives her a little bit more backbone. You know, it shows that she wants to improve herself. That she's not just this stupid go-with-the-flow character that they had given her at the time. If you remember, at the time of John's disbandment, Leo kind of had this character where she would screw up the match by trying to help. She would constantly be doing boneheaded things, like um, hitting people who were in submissions, or hitting the person putting one of her teammates in submissions in a way that would make the submission worse for them. It it was really funny at first, but then like you're never going to improve if you're like that. And this would set the catalyst for the next thing I'm going to talk about, which is Leo joining Queen's Quest. Jungle's now in TCS. The rest of John has joined her. Natsuko's now in Orotai. That leaves Leo without a faction. She... But she doesn't just go and ask Queen's Quest to join up right away. And she doesn't get draft or like recruited into it by Queen's Quest either. The way I would play this out is that she would spend a little bit of time being kind of an independent, right? But she would go on losing pretty much every match. She would constantly be getting pinned and submitted and whatnot, always losing like she did before and now, you know, like she. That's pretty much, nothing's really going to change for her. But, this is until she has a singles match against Azumi in an opening match. Now, this is the only time that would probably happen. Opening match or second match or whatever of a show. Azumi versus Leo, they just have a match. Maybe, you know, Momo and all the other Queen's Quest members are doing things. And Azumi, you know, doesn't have a match. So they put up against Leo. It doesn't matter why. Stardom does things like that all the time. So, Azumi versus Leo in one of the opening matches. They wrestle. Azumi easily beats Leo. Like, easily. Of course. She's way much better. She's way better. She's just better in every single way. So, she beats Leo. Leo asks Azumi after the match to join Queen's Quest. She wishes that she was better. She hates losing all the time. She doesn't want to be a joke anymore. She wants to be a real wrestler. And she looks up to the way that the Queen's Quest members hold themselves. That they're, they're, they're all so amazing. Everyone in Queen's Quest at this point is a phenomenal wrestler. Think about it. Momo, Utami, Konami, Azumi. Um, maybe B? I, I, I don't really know if B would be a part of it at this point. I think she would. Uh, just because in my head, like the timeline, at this point B would be in Queen's Quest. 
She might even have the red belt by now. It doesn't matter, really, in the grand scheme of things. I'm not going by and meticulously pinpointing the whole timeline. If you guys like these videos, maybe that's what I'll do in the future. I'll actually like sit down and structure a timeline date-wise where all of these events will take place in like future videos that I do. This causes Momo to get in the ring and Azumi and Momo start discussing it. They, you know, they sit there and they talk and, you know, they keep looking over, blah, blah, blah. You know, the thing that stardom does sometimes. And they decide that they're going to give her a chance. They turn to Leo and they say, listen, you can be in Queen's Quest, but there are some things you need to know. Being in Queen's Quest is not easy. It is a very hard thing to do. No one is going to hold your hands. You need to shape up and you need to hold your own. You need to take responsibility for your own improvement. We'll help you, but it's on you whether you actually get better or not. And Leo accepts. She agrees and she happily joins Queen's Quest. They raise her hand, point to her, give her, you know, a Queen's Quest shirt or whatever. And... Leo is now a part of Queen's Quest. This is how I would have planned it, um, not using the draft. I think this would be a, a good way. It's really not that big of a story. It would be like a, a side, side, side story, you know, being played out in the opening matches of each show. You know, it's, it's really not going to have a lot of story to it because opening matches never really have after match promos or anything like that. But a lot of this could be said through pre-match promos and just in the ring. You know, Leo losing, looking really upset, you know, and walking off. Um, you know, and then the next match, she talks about how she's ashamed of losing all the time. She wants to get better. She doesn't know how. And that'll lead to the Azumi thing, you know, and then that whole promo. I think this would not only be a really good idea, I think it's way better than what happened. And I even kind of like how Leo joined Queen's Quest. How it was such a surprise to everyone that Momo picked Leo. Everyone online was hating it. Like, like everyone. I was, I kind of felt like I was one of the only people. I know I wasn't the only person, but I kind of felt like I was one of the only people who actually really liked the idea of Leo joining Queen's Quest. I was a big supporter of it right away. And I was defending her choice, or Momo's choice, to recruit Leo online constantly. I was very happy with his decision because I saw something in Leo. I, I don't see her as like a main eventer, but I think she could be a very solid mid-carder one day. And I think the best place for her is going to be somewhere that's going to kick her butt into talent. And that's Queen's Quest. So that's how Leo joins Queen's Quest. Which obviously brings us to the Queen's Quest member who left, Konami. Let me scroll down here and let's start talking about this. So as you all know, because of my stardom personality or um oh man, personality analysis video, I, I can't remember the exact name of it, where I kind of amplified everyone's traits and made them seem a lot worse than they really were. You know, like Momo's a sadist, um uh, Elrice is a masochist, um uh things like that. But what I said in that was that Konami kind of had no passion or no drive. And, uh, and, and that kind of goes along with this. Is that I'm starting this out with Konami kind of losing interest in Queen's Quest. If you guys remember, Konami doesn't really take the lead in any group she's ever in. She, she always kind of attaches herself to a much more charismatic and loud person. And she kind of sits back. She kicks butt in the match. They usually lose because of her partner. And then that's it. Well, now she's actually teaming with some competent people for once. And people who aren't really that much more personality driven than her. So there's really no excuse for her not to stand out. But she really doesn't. And she starts going bored with Queen's Quest because there's no challenge. You know, they can handle themselves. And there's no, nothing for Konami to kind of hold on her shoulders and so that's going to lead to her slowly starting to lose the passion she starts leaving matches directly after they you know the end kind of like how Kagetsu would leave the matches in the tag league right after the end 
like match end one two three someone pins and she just walks off while the rest of them are you know in the ring kind of like what's her problem you know um so that's going to lead to her also not participating in pre-match promos she's she's just gonna stand there you know kind of look bored maybe even upset and you know they're gonna they're, they're gonna be talking about it they're gonna they're gonna want to know what's wrong with her she's just gonna say like nothing whatever don't worry about it this is also going to cause some upset with her because Leo and B are going to start taking on more of a role in Queen's Quest so that's just two more people for her to kind of compete with in terms of the spotlight and she's losing to pretty much everyone you could say that Konami was definitely more like more spotlight than like Leo but I feel like watching Leo's progress since joining Queen's Quest has kind of made her more interesting to watch in Queen's Quest than Konami was in Queen's Quest. So at this point, she's kind of on the lowest rung in terms of who you really want to watch right now in Queen's Quest. And that is when Konami decides to challenge for the red belt against B. She doesn't do it. She fails. She loses. That is when Hana and Jungle come out to recruit her, saying that her talents are wasted and that she would be much more appreciated in um, TCS. At this time, remember, the only people in there are, like, Hana, Jungle, and then, like, Ruka and Kaiori. You know, there, there really isn't anyone else of note that could take, you know, the, the spotlight away from her. At the very worst, she'd be, like, third. So they start saying things like, your talents are being wasted here. Like, you, you're, you're wasting time running around with a bunch of kids playing soldier. And that is, of course, when Azumi and Momo come out to take offense to that. They, you know, they, they start going back and forth, back and forth. And that is when Hana sets up a three versus three match. Momo, Azumi, and B versus Hana, Jungle, and Konami. Match comes, Konami submits Momo with her triangle answer, winning the match for them. She wins. She, she's not on the winning team. She won herself. She beat Momo, the, now, the, the new, like, lead of... Queen's Quest, and that is when she gets up, says, QQ was holding me back, you know, her whole FU QQ thing starts right there, and she turns around, joins TCS, and that's the rest, like, then you could just have her start acting how she acted once she joined TCS, they, this, 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 in my opinion, is just such a more gradually organic way for her to get to that point than just Oh, I got recruited, so now I hate my old team. It that was one of the worst ones in my opinion. It it was so out of nowhere and it made no sense. This way at least there's some you know seeds being planted along the way to make her want to not like QQ. And this is how I would have done it. Lastly, we're going to talk about the three sisters, Hanan Rina and Hina, and how they join their prospective teams. Hanan doesn't really need to be talked about too much because she stayed in Stars. She's not going anywhere, but she's going to be a part of these other two storylines. So we're going to start with them just being a team. The, the, the three sisters, they, they, they're constantly teaming together for months. This isn't going to be like a, a thing. They're, they're growing as a team. And everything seems fine. But that is until they have a match uh, against Hana and Kaiori. It's um, Rina and Hina versus Hana and Kaiori in like the opening match or second match or whatever. If you really think about Stardom's booking and stuff like that, this really isn't that far off what could happen. So that happens, and obviously they lose, but Rina starts idolizing Hana more. As time goes on after this, you know, not slowly, but like not fast, like let's say like the next like three or four matches, she starts trying to look more like Hana. She starts adapting the mannerisms of Hana. She, she st slowly starts turning into Hana like she is now. And this is when she, her personality starts shifting as well. She starts getting into arguments with Hanan and Hina. She starts disagreeing with them and blah, 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 and acting different. And they start arguing with her because she's acting all different and mean and stuff like that. And this leads to a match where it's a six-man six tag match. It's uh, Hanan, 
Hina and Rina versus, you know, Hana and then two other members from TCS, maybe Kaiori and Ruka or whatever. And Rina betrays the other two and it allows Hana to get the win. This, of course, causes some conflict. Rina announces she's joining some she's joining TCS, but th the important thing here is that Hanan thinks that Hina was in on it and that she helped Rina betray Hanan to help Hana win. Probably because like in a way where Rina used Hanan who was like kneel kneeled over or whatever to push Hanan like over her to allow Hana to come in and get the pin or whatever. It's really not important the specific details, but Hanan thinks Hina betrayed her. She starts yelling at her, saying how she betrayed her, and that she's just like Rina. She can't be trusted, and she, run, she runs off, and Hina looks sad. Crying would be a plus, but I know, you know, not everyone can do that. I know she's a big crier, and this alone could cause her to burst into tears organically that would be awesome for the the story but it, do, it doesn't need to be she just needs to look sad next show it's going to be hanan and hina versus azumi and leo let's say and uh hina gets pinned by leo or azumi it doesn't matter really which one this causes Hanan to think that Hina purposely lost. Remember, this is one show over. She, she already thinks that Hina betrayed her once, so why wouldn't she think it again? She starts going off about how um, you betrayed her, like you, you, you did it to allow Clean's Quest to win. And that is when Azumi and Leo kind of like defend her, being like, hey, we had nothing to, like, we had no arrangement. She's not a part of Clean's Quest. She's not defecting. She has nothing to do with us. But Hanan doesn't listen. She leaves and Azumi and Leo are there to um, console or make Hina feel better because she's all sad or whatnot. And that is when Azumi starts trying to recruit Hina. She tells her that she would be a lot more appreciated and a lot more loved in Queen's Quest. And that her other sisters turn their backs on her even though she did nothing wrong. And that they would appreciate her. And voila, Hina joins Queen's Quest. There you go. It's really not that hard. Now, you don't have to think that any of my ideas are good. Because a lot of them could be considered really stupid or boring or whatever. That's fine. But I just feel like there could have been a lot better ways to have these people join these teams or factions. Other than just saying, hey, management said we have to have a draft. So now we're doing a draft and now you are on my team whether you like it or not because why can't the person just immediately defect from the team like literally the next day go hey I don't want to be a part of you guys I'm leaving and I'm joining my original team there's nothing stopping them from doing that like literally nothing so so why even stay in the team why the sudden personality shifts there, there's nothing organic about any of these things and that's why I don't like the stardom draft it's it's not just because I always worry that my favorites are going to, you know, go to a team that I don't want. It's because them leaving the teams means nothing because it's not them doing it. But then all of a sudden their personalities just change and that kind of takes you out of it. Like these are characters. And in any other media, if a character all of a sudden just did a complete 180 personality wise just because they got drafted into another faction or team or, you know, country or whatever. It wouldn't make any sense. There would be no reason for that. It's not like they planned it because they have no control over it. And they don't know who's going to get, you know, the first pick. They don't know if they're going to be able to get that person or not because they could be picked by another team. It's it. There's just no way to say that, like, Kagetsu planned... On taking Natsuko. She couldn't even know that she had the option to have Natsuko until literally after the match. You can't say that, you know, Hana planned on taking Konami. I mean, you could say that she did, 
But like, it wasn't until after the match that she even had the option to take Konami. And Konami couldn't have planned on joining TCS. You could argue that it didn't matter who she joined, Konami just wanted to leave. But then why are you assuming that Konami even knew she was going to leave Queen's Quest? She could have been drafted. She could have been drafted way before someone else. Like, she didn't know. The only people who knew that was, like, Momo. And even then, you don't know because there's really no def definitive plans in these drafts. There's it, it, It's just all random. And I think that's why I don't like it. See, is I, I prefer character growth that's organic. Like, Orisa and Tam's relationship. Literally the best story in wrestling this year. I don't care if you don't agree with me. That's what I think. I think it's the best story this year. This is one of the best things. Can you imagine if this started just because Arisa got drafted into Stars instead of naturally joined because Mayu wanted her to? That it wouldn't have made as much sense at all. Actually, no, that one would have made a little bit of sense. That would have made a little bit of sense. But it wouldn't have been as good because Arisa joining stars was because she got asked to come back by Mayu and she wanted to join and she you know the, the whole interaction with her asking Tam and Tam saying no that wouldn't have happened that is an important part of their storyline it just wouldn't have happened you know um Utami Utami coming saying hey you know what I know you want me to be on Queen's Quest I'll join Queen's Quest if we win this tag league and we win the titles. Momo says, okay. They go on. They win the tag league. They win the titles. Utami accepts the invitation into Queen's Quest. Awesome story. It had a lot of stakes on it. It was really cool. You could see that they clicked already. But Utami just didn't want to settle down yet until she knew it was the right person. <laughs> this sounds like a relationship, but whatever. That would have sucked if it was just Momo going, yeah, uh, I pick Utami. And Utami's like, okay, I guess I'm Queen's Quest now. It, it would have been dumb. Just like all of these other drafts. It, that It's just not good storytelling. I'm sorry. If you like the drafts, that's fine. But I don't. So there you have it. How I would have naturally and organically had every one of the people who got stolen during the drafts and put in another team. I guess you could argue Natsuko wasn't stolen because she wasn't technically a part of a faction anymore. But you know what I mean. Everyone who was taken from one team and put in another team because of the draft. Here is how I would have done it. Organically and naturally through booking and stuff like that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you like, like, do you think any of these ideas would have been better than what happened? Uh, wh how would you have had some of these people join the teams? Um, let me know. I would love to read some fantasy booking, you know, from you guys. And let me know if you like this idea in general, because it's kind of easy to do. All I got to do is do pinpoint uh, um, bullet points and just kind of ad lib all of them together into a coherent story, which sometimes I can do, sometimes I can't. All right.